dot com. The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN, 8.30 a.m. Tuesday morning, 60 minutes to go until the opening bell. And we got markets starting off in positive territory yet again. We have the S&Ps as high as 3,075 just within the last couple hours. Right now, S&Ps positive by 13 points. You're trading at 3,068. NASDAQ futures positive by 31, trading at 96.26. NASDAQ right up there near all-time highs. Dow futures up 141 points, trading at 25. 5,604. We've got oil up 71 cents at 36.15. The 10 year yield 0.68%. We'll start things off. Jump over to the chart of the volatility index, the VIX. We saw a spike early, early yesterday overnight of 3060. As the market charged higher, the VIX pulled back. We're now with a 27 handle of 27.62. For some context in the longer time frame, the run up and the run down just kind of been hovering right under 30. For a time period, we did get that spike on May 14th, but that was a quick one up to 40 and back down to that level. And you see, we're footing with levels that we were actually at as early as February 25th, you have the VIX climbing to above 30. Start things off, let's jump over to the charts. We'll start it off with the Dow. You back things up, there's the close of action yesterday. You trade a little bit lower to begin the overnight session. From midnight though, the run higher begins. We trade from about 25,300, now trading 25,611. NASDAQ 100, Makes it as high as 96.68, currently trading 96.23. We finished yesterday just under 9,600. S&P's 3,068, as I mentioned, made it as high as about 3,075 overnight. You see where we finished yesterday's trading action, just above 3,050. Crude oil trading higher, reached a high of about 36.50. Crude trading at 36.18. There's your gold contract. Gold, even in the last few minutes, selling off a few dollars. Gold trading. Pretty healthy price level of 1747. Actually made it up to above 1760 early, early yesterday. And again, we hit that level middle of the day at 1755 at about 8 o'clock, 1756. And we're within $10 of that price level. And the euro US dollar, again, some euro strength, dollar weakness, continuing that trend recently. Euro at 111.63. Maybe this will chart will do it. I mean, you put this, you, you go back, check out that run, right? This is the euro, and it would be inverse to the dollar. I mean, the euro, just on May 25th, was trading at 108.70. We're at 111.63. In terms of what else we have happening in the market, stocks making moves. So Dick Sporting Goods out with their numbers, $1.71 a share for the first quarter, wider than they lost. Excuse me, they lost $1.71 a share for the quarter. Market was looking for a 50 cent set. 57 cents a share loss. Revenue and comp st store sales also missed estimates. Dick's e-commerce sales surged 110% during the quarter, and the retailer added that the current quarter has gotten off to a strong start. DKS, as I had mentioned on the show yesterday, you're trading a little bit higher on those numbers. And there's your volatility up to 38.40, down to about 35.50. We're currently sitting about 50 cents higher at 37.01 right now. Bid offer, bid ask, excuse me, 37 by 37.04. Lululemon, so they get a downgrade to equal weight from overweight, saying the stock's risk reward profile is now balanced after a 125% run up since mid March. Lulu, quite a rebound for them. And they get a little bit of a downgrade saying maybe we've rebounded a bit too much because look at that, right? I mean, Lulu, are they really perfectly positioned to benefit from people uh, working from home and technology taking off? Athleisure wear, I guess that's the deal, right? Everybody, uh, you can wear warm-ups and you can wear whatever you want if you're working from home. Uh, 260 down to 128, we're sitting at 308 uh, with a bid ask of 305.72 by 306. And for some longer context here, how about that run up? 
The run really begins, you back it up to about April of 17. So we're talking about basically three years. You go from 44 to above 300. Crazy. Land's End, in a preliminary report, the apparel retailer said it lost 64 cents a share for the first quarter, wider than the market was looking for 56, revenue slightly below forecast. Land's End said its company-operated stores have seen comp store sales growth of 14.2% in February before the stores closed in mid-March. So things were going well. That's quite a comp sale, right? 14.2. But then COVID-19 comes, things change, the world changes overnight. Land's End, whew. They are in trouble. How about that long-term chart going back to 15? Uh, going back really, I guess, to December of 14 from 56. You wanna talk about a trend line. I don't even have to draw the lines. There's your upper boundary. There's your lower boundary. It leads to zero. We're at 722. You're gonna open a little bit lower today, but we just traded down. I mean, let's put this. Yeah, look at that from $18. Is that the beginning of this year? That's, fair. that's, that's Christmas. So from $18. And then the slide really begins for COVID at 11, down to four, seven. I would be very careful of that company. Starbucks, so in a bid to cut costs, you're seeing this across the board. I think these are gonna become much more common. We got back-to-back -back stories here, Starbucks and Southwest in terms of offering workers some type of a buyout, trying to make sure you're cutting workforce, cutting hours. That's the scary part about this, right? We lose all these jobs and the hope whether it was misplaced or placed well, was that you could see a quick rebound and they'd all come back. A lot of businesses, folks, when you even have Starbucks, asking workers to choose between more limited hours or taking unpaid leave until at least September. That's three months. That is a long time, especially when we've already been dealing with woes going on three months already. Uh, you back it up three months, you're at what, March 2nd? Yeah. And we, we really started this in the beginning of March, towards the middle of March. Florida, uh, I believe it was about March 15th, March 17th is when that came down. Southwest offering workers bio packages and temporary paid leave in what CEO said is an effort to ensure the airline's survival. I'm sure it's a similar deal with Starbucks. You can't just be uh, paying for workers when nobody is in the store at the same level of business that supported that payroll previously. Southwest has never laid off or furloughed employees in its 49-year history. A lot of firsts going on in the market. We'll take a look at Starbucks to start it off. Now, this is going to be a yearly. There's some volatility for you. Starbucks, actually one of the earlier companies hit because of their exposure in China before things hit the U.S. So there's January. There's a little bit of sell-off. Here's where the sell-off begins in the U.S. You go from 90 down to 50. We're back at 78. You're going to open a little bit lower at 77, 71. And you see the action on them. And you also have Love, Southwest, actually getting a pop. Uh, 34.46 up almost a dollar from 33.62, but again, some context from almost 60 to 22.47. Uh, and be wary, folks, of these airlines. You know, you want to you want to invest a small, small, tiny, tiny portion of your portfolio that might go to zero, as in your stop on some of these stocks should be bankruptcy because it's going to be possible. Checking back in on the markets, S and P futures right now positive by 14. We're trading at 3,068, and as we come to this first break. How about that NASDAQ? Check that out. From 97.63, down more than 3,000 points to 66.28, and we're within reachable. We just traded to 96.70. You're talking about within 100 points. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. Many of our new listeners have heard about The Tiger's Den. The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of the TFNN shows, plus see all of the charts as they happen live and have access to archives of all of those charts. You can test drive The Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days and greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets and how to make your money work for you. Details on The Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN has launched our brand new website. You can still visit us at the same TFNN.com URL, but when you do, you'll see a new and improved homepage with a much simpler navigation, whether you're watching Tiger TV live in high definition or just accessing your newsletter subscriptions. We even have new pricing in six months and yearly options. Check out the new TFNN.com now and experience all the upgrades. TFNN.com, educating investors. 
The gold market has taken off topside in a large way in 2020. If you want to take advantage of this sector, now is the time to subscribe to my gold report. The Gold Report took profits in four of its equities in the gold portfolio in the first week of January for a combined profit of 99.2%, with two positions left in the portfolio that have a profit of 67.5% as of January 7th. The Gold Report is a comprehensive look at the metal sector as well as the markets that move gold, which is the currency and bond markets. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to lose. Every Monday morning, I publish the Gold Report with coverage of gold, silver, bonds, the XAU, HUI, JDX, as well as more than 30 different mining equities. To see for yourself the types of profitable trades that are recommended within the Gold Report, sign up now by visiting TFNN.com. Don't miss out on the next great gold trade. Sign up today. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866 476 the prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. Dow up 150, S&P up 14 right now. You got the NASDAQ up about 28. Jumping into other equities with action, you got Apple cutting their iPhone prices in China as it seeks to extend the momentum it has enjoyed as the Chinese economy gradually reopens. So they're cutting prices, trying to accelerate on that momentum. Although Apple's own official Chinese website does not reflect price reductions, double-digit discounts can be seen on various reseller sites like, I guess, Tmall work so slack they get an outperform in new coverage of cohen which is said to shift to remote work has given the workplace messaging platform a major booster shot that is underappreciated. and check out this chart folks work is their symbol uh how about a rocket ship even in the last week from 30 dollars up to 40 dollars overnight you're at 37 up to 40 with that but check this out it's even bigger than that you go from 28 down to 15 and we're going to open at about forty dollars. I mean, it just seems like uh, um, as as certain companies, a company like this, yeah, you're competing with some big shots. But man, the whole world has to collaborate online now. Slack trading higher. Stitch Fix, they're going to cut 1,400 jobs in California, move some operations to a handful of lower cost locations. Online clothing stylists said the move was related to the cost of doing business in California and not COVID-19. S Fix is their symbol. I personally never use this product, seen it advertised. Look at that, right? From 30 to 10, back to 23. We're trading a little higher today, 2366 by 2439. While we're on the topic of should have went there after work, but Zoom, you talk about an acceleration. You started this year out at 66, and you're trading right now at 211. You want to talk about some acceleration. We just went from 150 up to 212. So Zoom, not sure what's going on down here. We got some crazy drawing. Zoom with their earnings after the bell tonight. Whoops, I don't want to be placing that trade. Delete. <laughs> 21150 to 212 remarkable the acceleration zoom has had just for some context again you pull this back there's been some volatility for sure so here's where immediately people realized uh throughout this this is the february 25th 26th 27th that's where the, the market began to fall apart you you trade up to 160 back to 110 180 back to almost 130 we go up to 1 a 7780 
was the high. And then in the span of four days, you trade down to 145 almost, and you're back 211 on the price of Zoom. That will be a watched one for their earnings. Uh, I believe they're supposed to have revenue about 200 million. The remarkable thing, I believe, and I'm going to pull it up right now, their market cap at this price tag, I think you're talking of somewhere to the tune of $55 billion. Let's check it out. I'm going to pull it up right here. Their profile. Yes, at that closing price yesterday, the market capitalization of Zoom, $57.6 billion. So are they a great company? Yes. Uh, are they going to be able to make the amount of money that you need to to have a hundred billion dollar valuation I mean where's the potential upside here when you're buying it at a market cap of 60 billion dollars and who is paying for this product whether it's uh, are you paying for the service because I'm not sure people are gonna want ads flashed everywhere in their free service but that's probably what's gonna happen but I don't know if ads can support a hundred billion dollar valuation just start to think about those things a company like this and guess what we talked about yesterday they're gonna be competing with Facebook Google, Apple, all you know, WhatsApp, all of these services having their own, um, even Slack. That's you know, all of that going on. There's no reason why Slack can't come up with a free service to be able to uh, conference if you want, and so forth. Go to meeting, etc. Thank you. Uh, jumping back to the markets, S and P ticking back a bit, zooming in. So I've seen a little bit. We're now off about 10 points of where we're trading at about 6 in the morning. And jumping back to other stocks with volume. So in terms of credit card processing, Visa said U.S. payment volumes fell by 5% in May, slower than the 18% decline registered in April and a possible indication that consumer spending is recovering. Always good to see that. In the world of online payments or money transfer, MoneyGram is the target of a takeover bid by rival money transfer company Western Union, according to Bloomberg. No potential purchase price was disclosed. So MGI is MoneyGram. There you see that news going from 250 up to 386, and I believe it's WU for Western Union. Yes, both of those companies trading higher on the news that they may become one Western Union up to about 2381. For some context, yeah, talk about a tough woes though. 2845 down to 17, and for MoneyGram MGI, yeah, 670 uh, within the last 12 months down to a dollar 15 for them. All right, a couple other stories I had up here to cover. Uh, so the first one, and it's interesting how these tie together because KKR is the next one as well. Private equity lands billion dollar backdoor hospital bailout. KKR, Apollo, Cerberus own medical, they own medical services companies that receive no interest loans from the health and human services, okay? So this starts off with KKR, the coronavirus pandemic upended the system. IAH Emergency Physicians, a Houston staffing company owned by KKR, a little notice request from the government, applied for a $317,000 interest free loan. Well, what this get in, gets into, they approved the loan and almost 300 others totaling more than $60 million to subsidiaries KKR owns. Shout out from many coronavirus relief programs, private equity companies have found a back door at HHS where they've borrowed at least $1.5 billion according to Bloomberg. Remarkable stuff here. Now KKR, which is the crazy part, this story, because it's just remarkable how they all tie together. So June 2nd, let's see let's see what the time prints are. When, when was this one out? Was this out yesterday? No, both of them were June 2nd. That's what I, because I hadn't seen them. June 2nd at 4 in the morning, June 2nd at a about midnight, okay? KKR spends big and fast to avoid mistakes of 2008 crisis. Why not? If you're a private equity firm and you have $58 billion on hand, why would you not be spending like wildfire at great prices for long-term growth when you're receiving interest-free loans on top of it from the government? Um, so to get into the amount of deals they had here, come on, cooperate with me. Where's, where's my graphic? So they have, uh, we'll get into it. In mid-March, as the virus lockdown came into force, KKR's infrastructure team acted fast to buy waste management business Veridor Limited for 4.2 billion pounds or 5.2 billion US, biggest carve out of a publicly traded UK company since 2008. In a similar deal, will KKR agreed to acquire Wella and Clairol beauty brands from Cody, 4.3 billion transaction, including a billion from Cody. KKR is also one of three firms 
offering to take control of Spanish phone carrier, okay, for 3.3 billion US. And they did, this just didn't load. That's what I was looking for. So here is the graphic, visually always easy to understand. That's the amount of money that they've spent, private equity, outspending rivals during the virus crisis. And then pair that with all the money you're receiving here for backdoor hospital bailouts from HHS, interest-free loans. Uh, and you know, healthcare facilities owned by Apollo, which started the year with about 46 billion, received at least 500 million. Cerberus Capital Management, Stewart Healthcare System LLC, threatened to close a hard-hit Pennsylvania hospital, received 400 million. Uh, pretty remarkable looking at them back to back as they talk about KKR accelerating and private equity getting those bailouts. Stay tuned folks, we'll come back to finish up the program. I'll be right back in three minutes, stay tuned. Back in the day, I joined the Hotel California in 2006, and like many of you, was drawn in by, as well as, whatever you think about, you bring about whatever you focus on grows. You see, I believe that everything in life happens for us, not to us. And Tom ignited the fire within me to want to learn how to master the markets. So how did I go from knowing nothing about technical analysis to becoming the number one market timer for the S&P 500 in 2018 and the number two market timer in 2019? Simply put, I hired coaches with a proven track record, which led me to a whole new set of tools that I created to interpret the message of buyers and sellers. I would love the opportunity to teach you this award-winning set of tools and to help you improve your market timing. You can test drive my newsletter service, Mastering Probabilities, for the next 30 days with no risk to you. Plus, you'll gain access to archive workshops that'll take you step-by-step -step through my system. Sign up today by going to the homepage of TFNN.com and selecting Mastering Probability in the newsletter tab. Bam! If you haven't checked out the newsletters page of TFNN.com, what are you waiting for? All of the TFNN newsletters are informative, up-to-date, affordable, and a must-have for every trader looking to gain a competitive informational edge in today's markets. TFNN newsletters cover every aspect of the markets to offer you the very latest in market news. Plus, new subscribers get to test drive our newsletters risk-free for 30 days. From all aspects of the markets, including stocks, bonds, metals, commodities, and tech, there's a newsletter to fit your needs exclusively from TFNN. Stay informed each day you trade and get that competitive edge that will help you stay ahead of the game. Visit our newsletters page by going to TFNN.com and click the newsletters button near the top of the page. TFNN.com, educating investors. You know what's cool? Taking something that's good for you. Something specifically formulated to help with weight loss, better sleep, stress reduction, and the need to detox. Nico, our hunter and gatherer ancestors found all their nutritional requirements for health in their wild environment. But today, our food sources no longer contain the vitamins, minerals, and nutrients our bodies need to stay healthy and strong. That's why we need Primal Edge Daily Nutrition. It includes a special blend of ionic, soil-based vitamins, minerals, fatty, and amino acids in an easy-to-use liquid form. Primal Edge is powerful by highly concentrated folic and humic acids, nature's preferred delivery system. They have been called miracle molecules because, like sunlight, air, and water, life cannot exist without them. That's right, Paige. They ensure we receive all the nutrition we need to be healthy and thrive. We, we take, take it, it every, every morning. morning. Primal Edge, formulated and approved by Nico and Paige of Living a Primal Lifestyle. Buy it today for just $89. Click on the Primal Edge banner on the front page of DFNN.com. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV for the latest market information. Welcome back, folks. S&P futures right now positive by nine. You got Nasdaq futures positive by 10. The Dow futures positive by 114. Uh, for some context here, I have the S&P up. This is our whole drive down to positive territory. And, you know, we've seen some flushes down. I mean, these bars, we're talking huge bars here. We're talking about right here. We're talking about 58, 68, 66 points in that bar. That's over a 2% bar on the S&P. Right here, you're talking about 52 points from high to low, 
51 points from high to low in the S&P, and already the bar that we're dealing with has 35 points in the S&P, and we're dealing with, you back it up to May 14th, you're talking about only two red days out of, we're now on uh, the 13th total day. So since May 14th, there's been 13 trading days, three, five, eight, 10. Yes, this being the 13th trading day since May 14th, and we have only had two negative action days, red candles during that time. Keep that in mind, folks, you could see a pullback. NASDAQ 100 trading to all time highs. That's believable when you have the technology world accelerating like it has. I'm gonna remove that drawing since we can tell we're up back at almost 100% of that move. You have Amazon charging higher some of the tech stocks look at that acceleration amazon's going to open basically flat this morning at 2470 microsoft shares as well but when you're dealing with an s p that's approaching 3100 the all-time high was 3400 it's hard for me to believe that with the presidential election coming down the line in about five months folks five months that is going to be here before you know it you have china trade concerns accelerating on top of that. And you're gonna tell me that the S&P 500 should be at all time highs. These 500 companies combined should be at all time highs with the country shutting down. Uh, just be ready for some volatility because all time highs I struggle with. Being within about 10, 15%, I can understand that long term. Things are gonna rebound strong, but be ready for some volatility as we approach these. NASDAQ 100, why not? We'll see what happens. Maybe it'll accelerate even higher to 10,000. Stay tuned, folks. Larry Pesavento coming up live with Trade What You See at 9 o'clock. Should be an interesting market open. Live programming all day at TFNN. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back.